Hello again, everybody. Today is Friday, February 5th. Welcome into another Keep Boone Healthy Facebook channel video presentation. We are back with two of our favorite guests here. If they were uh, competing on a game show, this would be like the best of round, I, I think. Uh, we've got Jen Green from uh, App Healthcare, uh, the public health director and CEO. Of course, Sean Burroughs, the uh, director of pharmacy for Appalachian Regional Healthcare System, two of our more popular guests on this channel. And as we have said from time to time uh, during this vaccine rollout, we want to uh, check in with the, the two folks that are uh, working with, again, the health department and the hospital system to uh, work that vaccine deployment and, and keep you up to date on where we are in terms of group progress, what the latest news is on the vaccine rollout, and, and what the real conditions are uh, as we get to the county level uh, from what you may see in the news about federal or, or statewide deployments. So uh, we very much appreciate you both taking time out of your busy schedules to, to keep the community updated. Um, Jen, first and foremost, um, the right after the last time we talked, and this seems to be the way this works. So who knows what will be said tomorrow. But <laughs> right after the last time we talked, um, the state uh, was able to give counties a little bit more of a, I'll call it heads up on vaccine allocation for a three week period of time. Can you kind of talk us through what that means and, and, and how that has helped you all operationally understand now what is coming your way and being able to plan for that? Yeah, um, we I think a lot of the vaccine providers were just communicating back the challenges of having one number one week, uh, none a next week or a bigger number the next week. It made it very uh, hard for us to uh, think ahead. So uh, we're really grateful that the state is giving us this. Uh, each week, uh, Sean and I get notices uh, as vaccine providers uh, about what our baseline allocation is. And so what the state has done is they've taken a a portion of the whole state's allocation and assigned it based on population um, and divided that out so we have something that we can depend on knowing that it could be bumped up in the future uh, but it is something that we can depend on and so right now for us um, that is 200 doses a week uh, for first doses and um, uh, as a county I believe we're getting 500 doses uh, in total so um, still a small number. It's one we hope that grows. Uh, and I know that um, uh, both of us are working hard to try to make sure we're prepared for higher volumes as they become available. So uh, something that people have probably noticed uh, as they, they get slotted for appointments, whether they are with the health department or whether they are with the, um, the hospital system, uh, there is a new location that you all are working out of. Uh, the first uh, vaccine clinic over at the Watauga County Recreation Center uh, happened earlier this week. Uh, Sean, I know that, that ARHS patients have been routed through there, again, along with some appointments through the health department. How has that facility functioned uh, in, in allowing you space and, and the, the, the resource that you need to run an event like that? Yeah, first, first I want to thank uh, Jen and the health department for um, helping us with our vaccine allocation to be able to offer up that clinic on Wednesday. Um, the, the county rec center was fantastic, and I know it's, it's been disappointing for a lot of the community that uh, hasn't been able to open up yet. Um, but the, the county made a, a, a fantastic choice for us to be able to um, utilize clinics in that area. Um, and it's, it's so well laid out logistically. It's, it, it causes fewer challenges than some of the other clinics that were run from a space perspective. Um, and uh, I know uh, the App Health had a clinic in there yesterday as well. And it, it just, it flowed very, very well. Um, the, the patients were able to spread out because of all the space that were in there. So we were able to see a significant around 340 patients um, yesterday for our clinic, and it didn't seem crowded or busy at all. Um, so it was uh, it was it was very nice, and hopefully hopefully it can open up to the, for community use. But until then, um, it's definitely a, a blessing for us to be able to have that space to use. Yeah, just just fine for it to be open for this community use without any question. Um, and, and I think this would be a, a great time too to remind folks how uh, they can access that kind of clinic. So uh, Sean, we'll start with you. Can you run through the process that, uh, just as a reminder of, of what Appalachian Regional Healthcare System is doing to contact patients, get them scheduled, and, and ultimately get them to an event like that? Yeah, ours is, uh, I think, is, is quite similar to the App Health uh, Department. Um, if you just go to our main webpage, all of the information that you need to be able to log in and, and um, try and find a, an opening at a clinic, and they are all appointment-based. 
Um, that helps us with the, with flow, obviously. But if you go to the main APPRHS.org webpage, um, all of our information about COVID, about the vaccine, and about appointments should be found on there. And, and Jen, I would imagine a similar process, the, the vaccine interest form, I know has gained a lot of interest, <laughs> gained a lot of clicks, but um, how are you finding working through that list to, to stack people up? I'm sure you've got plenty to, to choose from in terms of patients at this point. We do, and our, our team is basically pulling down in order. So as you complete the vaccine interest form, either on the website or by calling us uh, on our call center, uh, we are time stamping that and of course grouping people. So right now we're working with uh, any healthcare worker that wasn't included earlier in phase one. And I don't think there's very many of those left, honestly. I think we've gotten through majority of them. Um, most of the people that we're working on now are people 65 and older. And so we're taking it in order and then people are getting outreach from our team to schedule an appointment um, as we uh, are looking ahead at these different appointment clinics. So let's talk a little bit about the groups. I know there's been a lot of conversation about that in, in the news media, in Facebook land and, and everywhere in between about just where the progression line is. If, if you had it to kind of mark like you do a gas gauge where we are and, and emptying the tank on group two and, and getting ready to fill up the tank for group three. Can you offer us any kind of, of insight as to, at least here in Watauga County, how the progression is going? And, and while I know you can't predict an exact date, are we close or still far away from moving on um, as the state will allow at some point to, to move into group three? Well, I think we're trying to compare notes. Um, you know, Sean has set up a weekly meet for us to communicate. And so we're trying to coordinate together as vaccine providers. But uh, my perspective, uh, looking at our vaccine interest form and knowing what I know about our vaccine allocations, uh, we are going to be in group two for some time ahead. Uh, I know people are anxious and we are too. Uh, we want to get as many people vaccinated as possible. So uh, I think it is important that the public knows that uh, both of us have uh, indicated larger capacities to the state so that we are prepared uh, and part of our uh, preparedness is really moving into that indoor space at the rec center. That's going to allow us to really quickly shift as soon as there's more supplies. But I think we need to be patient. I, I do anticipate, you know, throughout this month, at least, we will be in a group two, could go beyond that. And a lot of that is dictated by the amount of vaccine that we're given. Sean, anything you want to add to that? I, I completely agree. You know, uh a lot of our doses that we'll be giving this month are going to be second doses. So we, we do get a small allocation of first doses, just as Jen mentioned previously, but it's not nearly enough to get even close to through the list of group two folks that we currently have. So um, we have the facility set up. We have, you know, we have the, the community involvement. The volunteers has been remarkable. I think Shay from App Health mentioned to me yesterday, there's been over a thousand people that have um, shown interest in volunteering. So I feel like our community is ready. We've got, you know, the workflow to be able to do it. But unfortunately, right now, we're just not getting the vaccine to be able to quickly move through group two. So it's going to be a while. Now, you did mention the, the the second dose, and I know that there is a second dose clinic coming up on Saturday. This is, uh, you know, go back three weeks. This is the first big mass event that was uh, held in Watauga County. This clinic will be at Watauga High School, so sticking with the same venue there. Um, oh, Jim, what can you tell us about how this will run and what the response has been for people to um, you know, come back and get that second dose and, and, and be done with this process, at least uh, as of right now? Well, we're really excited about it. I think it went really well, thanks to the partnership with so many and uh, so many great volunteers helping us with everything from traffic to schedule to routing people with paperwork. Uh, and I think it's gonna go really smoothly. We're looking forward to seeing people with their second dose uh, get fully, uh, you know, uh, in that higher level of protection. Uh, I want to just say, you know, we're still trying to uh, message the importance of prevention. Uh, we still have to do that uh, on top of uh, getting vaccines. So it's sort of another tool in our toolbox. But um, I'm, I'm very excited about Saturday's clinic. Um, it is going to be a second dose clinic. So it's important people know that we are we are really focused on people who are coming back for their second doses, uh, not people getting first doses on Saturday. I know uh, people have the vaccine card. Is there anything else that they need to bring with them to this uh, to, to make sure that the paperwork part is, is uh, uh, administered as easy as possible? 
Yeah, I think the vaccine card is really the main thing for them to bring uh, in themselves. And uh, if they have questions, they're welcome to call us. Uh, we are happy to uh, confirm appointment times if you have questions about that. Um, hopefully you've already heard from our team to make sure your spot is saved. But if you have a question, uh, you're, you're welcome to reach out to us, but that's it. I've got one last question I want to want to ask the both of you because I think it's important sometimes and and where this this channel has been helpful since we started it back almost a year ago now which which well that that's a party we didn't want to necessarily have but I guess we'll schedule that too um it, the importance of context in 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 understanding the information that that comes from the variety of sources that we're seeing for instance other states and their vaccination rates and how they're getting vaccine deployed i think we can we can all understand that that with everything covid related not just this but take it into ppp loans take it whatever direction you want to um hindsight provides you the opportunity to wish you went back and did things a certain way maybe and i think from a, a federal and state deployment regard I'm, I'm sure that there would be a lot of things that were done differently had they had the opportunity to be snap the fingers and, and do them all over again but with that said there are states around us that don't have the same population there are counties around us that don't have the same population what would both of you say to the person that's scouring the internet and sees that x county and x states doing it this way or these folks are you know doing it this way i guess the value of keeping context local and understanding that that you all have the resources that you have but but it it sometimes can be dangerous to compare one situation to another situation especially when you're talking about different jurisdictions entirely am i right yeah i would i would say so i i think you hit it uh, population sizes vary population demographics vary so uh, some of our counties have more uh, older adults and so it may take them longer to get through uh, that group two population before they move to group three. And while uh, that's you know important to know, we may see other counties move to group three before we're ready. And that is something we have to keep in mind because you know the idea of grouping people is because we don't have enough vaccine to broadly administer to every person. Uh, this is an unprecedented time, as we've said before many times, right? Um, and the grouping is intended to try to make sure that the people at highest risk for severe illness and death get the vaccine first. And that's what we have to remember. And um, yeah, so I, I think patience is definitely going to be important moving forward. Sean, anything you want to say to that? Yeah, I would just say that, that we are, we're North Carolina, we're not West Virginia, we're not Ohio, we're not Florida, and every state has different challenges that they're facing. Um, and different speeds based on population, as Jen said, uh, as far as rollout. Some are going to take longer in uh, phase one and group one and group two, and some are going to move quicker through that, but it'll take longer in, in latter phases. So all we can control is is what we can control and what inven what allocation we get and how we dispense that out to the to the community. So we'll continue to work together um, and, and do our best to get every dose out that we can as quickly as we can. Uh, one follow up to that, and and Jen, I know we talked earlier about um, uh, as as group three will eventually uh, come to us. Uh, this is the essential worker group, and and the state did clearly define, or or a little bit more clearly define, I should say, um, what what categories of businesses are are in that. Certainly, a lot of focus on school teachers, law enforcement, educators uh, at various levels throughout the state, and we all know that that those categories that I just mentioned make up a large part of our workforce here. Um, um, do you anticipate any further fine tuning from the state on how they may allocate those? Will there be a priority system? I know they're just all kind of lumped into group three right now, but is that how it's going to stay? Or do you feel like in a few weeks we may find out that, that they will indeed prioritize within the group? I think we are all um, ready to see things change. Uh, as we, have, you said earlier, you know, sometimes we make an announcement on this and then something new is announced. So um, I don't know that there will be any more directive about prioritizing a group within a group, but we are prepared for that. If that happens, I think we will uh, shift our strategy and try to make sure we are following what the state is asking us to do. Um, you know, it's important to us that we use equity and uh, we think about. Uh, every person uh, being important to getting, uh, you know, us protected as a population. We want everyone to get a vaccine and we want them to get it as fast as we can. But 
um, you know, there's challenges because we have small supplies. So I think together we will be working through all of that um, logistically as, as best we can um, and, and be prepared for things to change uh, and uh, shift to meet that if, if we need to. Well, like, well, like we said, we're recording this. So, you know, tomorrow or Monday, <laughs> we're going to see something else. It's just the law of averages. I think that's happened to us the last two times we've done this. So maybe we should do it more. Who knows? Um, mm -hmm. well, well, Jen and Sean, thanks again for for taking your time and and all of the, the work, not only that you all are doing, but I know you've got teams that are supporting each of you. And and uh, those folks have been working around the clock for the better part of a year uh, on, on various elements of this. Um, uh, I know we didn't talk much about testing, but that still is is going on. I guess maybe Jenna, a quick follow up on that. Have uh, now Appalachian State students are back, um, you know, and we detailed that partnership uh, in in some other conversation uh, last week. Uh, any noticeable trend differences? I know it's early; it's probably too early to ask that question. But but is that been a smooth transition so far to to welcome new members back into our population? Yeah, I think we learned a lot last semester, and I really appreciate the university's um, help. They are really supporting a lot more contact tracing this semester, which I think is going to be a positive. Uh, and I think, you know, still offering testing for their population. So that's very important. And I think we will continue to monitor trends and see where we go. But um, I'm hopeful and, and optimistic that we've learned a lot and we've applied it this, this time around. Well, excellent. Well, thank you both for your time and, and for what you're doing to, to help keep Boone healthy. And uh, we will talk to you again surely uh, within days, I, I would imagine, on this channel yet again. Thanks a lot. Thanks, David. Thank you, David.